Hey, this is Mad Matt from Budget Boosting, and I'm going to talk to you guys today about intakes on a budget, performance intake on a budget, even on grocery getters such as this 2005 Dodge Neon. To the untrained eye, this thing looks totally stock and unmodified. However, let me turn the key and you'll hear a different story. to the untrained eye. This car looks like a stalker. And pretty much is. However, I did my own budget intake on this Neon that even would pass the carbs untrained eye. They think they're trained, in my opinion. <laughs> okay, carb looks at this and goes, okay, everything appears to be stock, so you passed our visual inspection. Hoorah, hooray. Because anything aftermarket in some states requires a CARB approval. For all you people that are not sure about CARB, they're a painful thorn called California Air Research Board. There's a good reason I don't live in that state. However, some people that do and they want to learn how to get performance for next to free or very, very cheap or the price of a performance non-paper free breathing air filter that's the price you're going to pay to upgrade your innocent dodge neon which sounds like a a blower going down the street real quiet like oh, you don't even hear the engine on a stock neon and believe me that sound you don't hear is all the power robbing devices that are put on your car to take away your fuel economy and any amount of power that you could have but by doing a few simple things, even a stock appearing neon can have a performance, an awesome fuel economy. I gained close to eight miles to the gallon by just doing few, few simple mods to this neon. I gained eight miles to the gallon on this car. I calculated it by hand and by odometer readings. Close to, hell, I'm almost at close to 40 miles to the gallon on this innocent neon and it doesn't do bad on performance considering it's my Econo grocery getter. Look at it, I mean, the only thing cool on it's the paint color. It's a front wheel drive Dodge Neon grocery getter. But even this can get performance. Now, I'll let my assistant here take a look at the uh, sleeper side of my air cleaner, then zoom in on the part that is performance that you can't see unless you look really, really close. You'll see a performance air cleaner hiding in that stock appearing air box right there. I will show you the secrets underneath the stock air box, which gives this little innocent neon superb performance for a little grocery getter econo car. The only neon that supposedly has performance is called the SRT4, and it has a turbo on it, and that explains it all. Boost. There's the sleeper air filter hidden in this stock air box right here. So to the untrained eye, it looks like a stalker. But I removed the uh, very restrictive paper filter, which, can you imagine trying to breathe through paper? <sighs> You can't breathe in a paper filter, but a nice free flow cotton one you can breathe real easy. Hence the extra performance and fuel economy that go hand in hand. Even this innocent 1990 Ford Bronco, look at it from a stock appearance, it looks completely stock, doesn't it? You don't see no performance air cleaner, you don't see no expensive. $300 intake kit. Can you believe it costs close to $300 just to get an intake kit? Unbelievable. Where you can just use a little ingenuity and some common sense, which I refer to as rare sense because it sure as hell ain't common. Anywho, 
this innocent Ford Bronco deserves performance too. See? Breathes directly out of the air filter. I haven't upgraded it to the K&N just yet, but just by doing this free intake precise cut, I cut right around, because the factory gives you a tiny hole to breathe out of, which isn't enough to feed this hungry V8. But I cut precisely on the dirty side, not the clean side, the dirty side of the air filter, which gets all that free flowing air into this hungry V8. That's called free horsepower and free torque and free economy right there. And then you do the muffler along with it, do a nice free flow exhaust system. <sighs> engine breeze in, <sighs> engine breeze out. Free performance or very cheap, whatever the price of parts are. Like a muffler, you get a nice welded muffler for $35. Like a thresh welded muffler. Beautiful, 35 bucks. Have a guy precisely welded in and you get rid of that heavy 30 pound boat anchor they put on from the factory? You can't even get your car to breathe. A car needs to breathe to survive. Anyhow, this one breathes just great. I'll let you hear this for a second. It's, it looks stock, but it's not. 302 Ford V8, 1990 Ford Bronco 4x4. I say it deserves performance. Every car deserves performance. Every car deserves performance. Now there are several ways that you can set up your own budget intake without spending $300 as an average to find a performance intake. Because you go around the internet, maybe you can find some real budget deals about half that price. But if you want a reputable name like K&N or Spectre, those awesome intakes, you're going to spend some money. I was just looking around Summit Racing one day and a few other places on the internet. Your average intake kit costs over $300. But with some ingenuity and your own fabrication, you can create your own intake for 30 or 40 bucks, the cost it costs you to get a free breathing air cleaner. All right, I'll show you some more examples. Here's a 1983 Nissan 280ZX. Now, you don't see a stock intake here, do you? My friend Brandon, he fabricated his own. He bought the intake probably for about 20 bucks over at one of the auto stores like Craig and O'Reilly or AutoZone and made his own, found his own intake elbow and some hose clamps. He made his own intake kit for free or next to free. He only bought a couple cheap parts, but he didn't pay no $300. We refuse to pay that much money for a simple upgrade. I want the most budget for my horsepower, the most horsepower and fuel economy for the price. Let's hear this little Nissan start. And of course, all of you are familiar from all the videos of this car, my 1986 Nissan 300ZX Turbo. I didn't pay a big amount of money for my custom air intake kit, which leads directly to the intake of my turbocharger. I did this on a budget. Heck, I just pretty much went on eBay, found a bunch of intercooler boost pipe, and it has so many bends, so many angles, and you create your own intake. You can buy it in two and a half, three inch, four inch, whatever you desire, and that size of your intake, with all the curves you need, Go straight to your intake or your MAF sensor, like in this case. This intake leads to my MAF sensor, then goes to the intake of the turbocharger. Therefore, you can still get your mass airflow readings for the ECU on your engine to perform and breathe 100% better because the factory breathes out of a tiny hole like this. Here, you're breathing out of the entire intake system and talk about turbo boost response when you get the right intake and exhaust on a car, it's furious. 
Now we're going to go over to my 87 Buick, which you've all seen on videos before, and we'll review its intake that I customized and designed myself. Okay, here's my 1987 Buick Regal Grand National Series car. As you can see, check out this custom intake. I have this hungry T66 turbo, which thrives for intake air, and it customized it through this bending little tube here. Goes straight to this intercooler piping that I created. Added hose clamps in a flexible hose. And since I was having some boost issues with boost surging, I put this little, uh, little box between the MAF sensor and the turbo, so any varying air that could cause from varying intake air won't reach the MAF sensor, and even low to mid throttle boost is smooth. I get no surging whatsoever. And it was a fix that a lot of people with Grand Nationals have had a problem with. Boost surging, when you get free flowing intercoolers and free flowing intakes, you get kind of like a boost surging because the intake of your turbo, you know, you're at full open throttle, wide open throttle, no problem. Whoosh, turbo's boosting like crazy, but when you're at low to mid throttle, boost sometimes is working, and kind of shaking a little bit. But this equalizer right here, think of it like a, a silencer on a gun. It's got some holes in this box. So when the air sucks through, and then the turbo kind of starts backing off because you're backing off the throttle a little bit, all this waving air gets caught in this box and doesn't give you false readings to your MAF sensor and keeps your boost smooth at all throttle settings. I designed this intake system myself. And the stock Grand National MAF sensor is very restrictive. So I put an LS1 MAF sensor on there from GM. So this is a later GM MAF sensor using a MAF translator to translate the readings from the Grand National MAF plug to the LS1 MAF plug. A lot of the guys with the Buicks like this modification because you get a lot more airflow for your turbo. More airflow is power, economy, all that good stuff. Okay, moving on to another stock vehicle. I'm gonna show you another stock vehicle intake from 1972, Datsun Nissan 240Z. Even back in the early 70s, they were restricting exhaust and choking your intake. Over here. Here's the 72 Datsun Nissan 240Z. Even back in the early 70s, can you believe it? Look at two side draft carburetors trying to breathe, and they gotta do so in this tiny little hole right here. Can you imagine what that does to choke in your performance? Unbelievable. But there's ways to free flow this intake as well. Now, for all you diesel fans out there, I love turbo diesels too. Now, take a look at this turbo diesel under the hood. For all those carb research guys, the intake looks totally stock, appearance wise. But by no way, shape, or form is my exhaust stock. I like power, I like boost, I love turbo diesel torque. So, I approach this the exact same way. From the factory, it breathes out of this little hole right here. It gets air, intake air from the fender of all places. The fender! Not very free flowing air, is it? However, I took the entire box out and at the same level as the air breather, I cut a hole in the front and a hole underneath and put a nice free flowing k and air filter in there. So if you zoom in on my air filter now, I created my own ram air effect to my turbo diesel. So the faster I go, I get more ram air in my air filter that I created this using the stock air box. And go on the internet and look for turbo diesel intake kits. Your jaw will drop when you pay anywhere from $300 to $500 for a diesel intake. And with this economy the way it is and how hard you have to work for your dollar, I'm not paying no $500 for an intake for my diesel. I paid $60 for the k and air filter and I made the rest myself. Talk about budget and power. This diesel responds like a dream. With this, the exhaust and the Predator tuner, I couldn't ask for a better performing turbo diesel. I'm happy. Now I'm gonna even give you an example on cars they don't even make intake kits for. 
Look at this 1992 Lincoln Town Car. Complete luxury car. When this car is running, you can't even hear it run. It's more quiet than an air blower, a blow dryer to blow your hair. It's e this is even quieter than that. You can't even hear your engine run. You know why? Look at this tiny little hole right here. Your whole heavy, big, giant, powerful V8 is breathing out of a friggin' straw. Why do manufacturers do this? The whole engine is hungry and it's breathing out of a friggin' straw. Can you imagine jogging down the road, breathing from a little McDonald's straw going <laughs> You'd be falling down on the ground within seconds from asphyxiation and breathlessness. Do you think your car is any different? Look at this hungry engine waiting to breathe. So I'm gonna show you and let you hear for yourself what this car sounds like with the stock intake. Hell, it sounds like wind. It's so quiet. Here we go. As you can see, the only noises that you can hear from this engine is a little lifter clatter, because I haven't started this engine in a while. But as far as performance, you don't hear any. But I'm gonna teach you how to take a stock luxury car, which they don't even make intake kits for, or they're very hard to find. You could probably fabricate one from a Mustang GT to fit this, because they are the same 4.6 engine with just a little bit different intake design. But you could probably fabricate that. But what would that cost you? You know, you could do our route and probably do it for $30 to $50. You know, get your own intercooler tubing, fabricate your intake and everything like that. Make sure you incorporate the MAF sensor because if you don't include this MAF sensor right here, mass airflow sensor, your engine won't work good. So my method, I like the sleeper method on a car like this because this is a Lincoln Town car. Who would ever expect performance out of this? But this will give you more performance and more reliability. Let's look inside this intake here. Okay, this is the clean side. After the air filter cleans the air, it goes in here into your intake, to your MAF sensor. Look at all the air cleaner area you have to breathe from, right? You take the air cleaner out, and all you got is this tiny pea shooter of a hole to breathe out of. This engine is not getting air. So the secret to getting more performance out of your air filter on any engine if you want performance and economy on any engine, you can do this for free or until you can afford the right air filter. This is a stock paper filter right here, but I can even get performance out of the stock air cleaner by doing a simple thing, a modified air intake. So instead of breathing out of this tiny hole, I'm gonna remove the dirty side of the air filter and cut it just around the same area as this hole. So I'm gonna make a cut all the way around this air box here and reinstall it and you're gonna get all the air cleaner breathing not just this tiny hole that's called free horsepower torque and fuel economy I'm gonna show you how I modify this air cleaner and you can do this kind of stuff on any intake on any car to get free economy free miles to the gallon free torque free horsepower on a budget in this case I'm gonna do this for free and then if you want to spend maybe 40 bucks 40, 50 bucks, you can get a K&N Performance Air Cleaner, a Spectre, any of those high performance non-paper filters to put back in your car. And talk about being worth every little set you spent. Now, if they did sell an intake for this car, would you guess what it would cost? An easy $300 right out of your bank account. And for how much, how much work you do for every dollar? I'm telling you, every bit counts. All right, I'm gonna show you how to do this. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do, mind you, this is a 1992 Lincoln Town Car, a total luxury car. No one ever expects performance out of this. It has a V8 in it, so why not? So I'm gonna get some more free economy out of this car by doing this thing. I'm gonna remove the intake system. Here's the clean side. I'm not gonna disturb the clean side of the air filter. I'm gonna remove the dirty side. 
Once I remove the dirty side of this air cleaner, I can then take it out and make that precise cut just below the intake air that the car gets. I'm gonna leave it there just to keep it sleeper-like. But after I do this modification, the car will breathe out of the entire air filter, not just this tiny straw. They expect a marathon runner to run with a straw in his mouth? That's what they're expecting out of your car every day. Why would the factory do this? I know why. Because they want to make more money selling fuel. Because the worst your car is off, the more you spend for fuel. It's a vicious cycle to screw the hardworking man and lady out there that's working their ass off to make ends meet. And you got people trying to take away economy from your car. And they do that from the factory, guys. But I'm teaching you ways to make it better. Okay, now that I have the bottom of the air box removed, I can show you the different angles. I unbolted it from the uh, body of the car. This is the dirty section, the section where your air cleaner draws from. From the factory, it draws out of this tiny little hole. Look at the hole from the other side. Like a reverse trumpet. This is what's giving your hungry V8 air. Give your car a wake-up call, Reveille, by making your intake better. All right, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make a precise cut right here with my saw. And on a cut right here, I'm gonna leave this little trumpet there just to keep it that sleeper stock look and cut all the way around so I'm breathing out the entire air cleaner instead of just this little reverse trumpet wannabe intake. That's not an intake. That's an intake! See a difference? Why does the factory do this to us? Well, I just said why. But really. Need I say more? I'm gonna work on this a bit and then I'll show you what the Lincoln gets just from this one little free budget tuning modification. Remember that trumpet I was talking about? That reverse trumpet? Hey, I need more air, I'm suffering. Look what I changed it to. Look at all that free flowing air this Lincoln is now gonna get. No air, like breathing out of a straw. Complete area of the air cleaner. Plus the little sleeper little trumpet thing so it still looks stock from the top appearance. Now I'm gonna show you the installation on the car, let you hear it, and you'll hear the difference of intake air, and that's all that more power and fuel economy you're gonna get at very low throttle outputs. What you're getting from the floor before, you're gonna get at a quarter throttle. All right, now I've put it all together. Doesn't look any different, does it? Maybe just a little bit cleaner, but it looks exactly the same, stock. But we all know the secret inside, now. If you look really closely to the side, you can see where I allowed the airflow to breathe. It's getting more air now. So let's start the car and hear the difference. Hear that intake? And that didn't cost me nothing, just a little bit of my time. And a little ingenuity, and see what can be done. Free power. And if I would've bought that K&N air filter replacement, it'd still look stock, but it'd even breathe more than that and give me more economy and more power. So, at that, let's uh, close this off. Thank you for watching Budget Boosting. If you like us, you like us on YouTube, you like us on Facebook, check out our channel, budgetboosting.com. Look at our website, check it all out, check on everything. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like us. And if for some reason you're not impressed and you don't like it, make a comment. 
I'll be glad to answer it for you. All right. And remember, after all this, and after all I've shown you, knowledge is power. It's horsepower. What I have here is the original turbo from my 1987 Buick Regal Grand National. This turbo worked good until I changed it with the T66. The turbo worked, I pulled it off for an upgrade. I didn't pull it off because there was a problem with it. As you can see, this turbo is awesome for 27 years old. Original Garrett turbocharger. Never came with a blow-off valve. Never had a blow-off valve. 27 years, not one problem on this turbocharger. A lot of the comments I received on my blow-through turbo video stated that if I didn't run a blow-off valve, my turbo would be destroyed. My turbo is not destroyed after 27 years.